Good morning. Thank <laughs> ah, can I go back? Okay. The worn out hands of a farmer. They look just like the hands of my grandfather in the north of France. Their hands were so hard and so strong, they're just like tools. And this could be my grandparents in Japan. After the Second World War, they helped rebuild the city of Niigata. Uh, they were structural engineers and they're working with metal structure. And this is my father, and that's me in the background. Um, my father is a sculptor, and he spent most of his life carving marble and granite. And my mom spent most of her life working with computers. My first job uh, as a teenager uh, was to work in a glass blowing studio. I was an assistant. And maybe it doesn't come as a big surprise, but uh, in my professional life, I've developed love for crafts and making things with my hands. And today, most of my time, I'm building ro robots for exploring the ocean and measuring the health of the oceans. I've been fascinated by the tools and the working environment. And maybe you have noticed in those pictures is that in the background of each of these pictures, there's always a bench. It seems like it's a forgotten tool. It's always in the back and has enabled all these beautiful things around us to exist, yet we don't really talk about it. I'm really lack as well is that a lot of the times when the craftsmen spend a lot of the time on the bench, they kind of end up looking like their bench. A little bit like people look like their pets. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit troubling because I, I found this is also happening to me. Um, but I really like him. He looks like an angry dwarf working on metal. And um, oh, it's not working. And so this simple bench have uh, had so many functions from the very simple craft to the very advent, advanced uh, scientific discovery to mass manufacturing. And now you may be hearing these words a lot, but we are entering in the fourth industrial revolution. So the first industrial revolution was the invention of, say, the steam engine and mechanized activities. The second was the invention of the production line. And the third industrial revolution is the automation of this uh, production line. The fourth industrial revolution, some will argue, it's, it's a complicated issue because it's happening right now, is when the objects are becoming intelligent, when production and consumption becomes networked, when things become intelligent. And still, within this process of invention, um, this is the place, for example, where the first Apple computer was born. The first Apple computer was made of wood, and it was made on a bench uh, such as this one. So you have, you have to have a, a space to work, uh, tools, friends, and great ideas. But um, this technology called leaps haven't have, uh, happened only uh, related to technology. They have changed civilizations. From the invention of the very first tools in Africa with the early humans, to the steam engine in the UK that spawned the Industrial Revolution, electric motors, nuclear power, uh, computers, the internet, wireless technology, and now most of the manufacturing goods are made here in China. And so being here um, and being a technologist holds a special responsibility because we have to invent this fourth industrial revolution. So technology has brought us many great things, but also we shouldn't forget that actually it doesn't necessarily bring us to fulfill all our human needs. This is the pyramid of the human needs. At the bottom are the basic needs, like water, food, and the shelter. The second layers are psychological needs, mostly family and friendship. And the top needs are what we call self-actualization. So it's got to do with creativity and access to wisdom. That's the kind of society that we would want to be. However, majority of the population doesn't have access to necessarily the top. And some will argue that you don't need technology to do that. That is also true. But technology can make it easier for a greater number of people to access that. The other problem with this idea of progress is that mass manufacturing has brought a lot of environmental uh, impact. I don't need to explain this. We are in Shanghai. This is a picture from Shanghai uh, air pollution. But also, a lot of the things that we make, 
when we're making them, we tend to forget that a lot of that will end up in the landfill. Or even worse, sometimes it ends up in the ocean and comes back to us in the food chain. So every single act that we do, ex extracting material, using energy to transform it, uh, disposing of it, actually has an impact on the environment. And the tiny thing we do even has an impact on the climate. So the question is, how can the fourth industrial revolution that we're building now can integrate all these technologies advances that we have had in the past, yet not destroy the environment and the social fabric? That's the challenge. So since a year, um, I've been building uh, with a community in Hong Kong a space that would accommodate all sorts of makers. Uh, we took a big industrial site, a factory, a metal factory, and we asked the community, what would you do with it? How would you transform this space? And so uh, we had a lot of volunteers coming to repair the space, and a lot of strong women. And uh, now we have this beautiful space. And the dream of the space is basically anybody could walk in the space and have access to wood tools, metal tools, 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC. It's a maker space. So the idea is that you come in and you can do everything. But we have paid a special attention to the development of the bench that I mentioned at the beginning. With this question, is it possible to create a universal tool, the tool of tools that would create the next generation of technology? So this is our bench, very simple, similar to the one before. So we have the traditional tools, but we're trying to see how we could integrate all these new technologies to have one tool that would be very simple, just a table, but it would enable anyone to build work with electronics and biology, chemistry, optics, and all the advanced uh, science at an affordable cost. So we also made a version with the kids, for the kids, and I'd like to show you a few of the projects that we have done in the last few months. So the kids in our workshop are using the power tools after a quick introduction, and this is a, a video from two days ago. Uh, the kids have designed a wind turbine that looks like a tree, so it can be in the city. Or a wind turbine that has transparent mechanical parts, so you can see how it works, or easily repair it. They have designed uh, this machine that uh, you use to pull on the beach and collect uh, the garbage from the beach, and then you bring it up, and then you separate uh, the, the sand from the garbage. We have been building a hot air balloon, or helium balloons, that are carrying a, a UV a camera, so we can actually see the temperature of objects, so we can assess the energy efficiency of buildings built by nine years olds. We have built robots that have a camera on board and a Raspberry Pi that measure the plastic pollution in the water. We that's have okay, been okay. taking and samples of water and around Hong Kong horrible. and bringing okay. this back to the makerspace and analyzing with spectrometry and spectrofluorometry to see the, uh, the chemical pollution in the water. We have built bioreactors. So these are so small the city uh, algae algae setups that allow us to compare which algae operation. should grow the fastest to fight against the red tides in happens. Hong Kong. Uh, we have built 3D printers from discarded DVD drive, broken DVD drives, that we have repurposed and built a 3D printer with. With those 3D printers, we have printed prosthetic limbs for handicapped children, about 30 of them in the space. We have built hydroponic systems uh, so that we can create your own organic food in the heart of the city. Uh, we have transformed a uh, low-cost wheelchair into an electric vehicle at very low cost for uh, the elderly in Hong Kong. Uh, we have built tents for the homeless. So all these projects that I showed to you, they, are all been, they have all built, been, uh, built. They have all been built with the bench that I just showed at the beginning. And so the idea is that we don't just give the bench, but we also uh, give the uh, material and the instruction how to use the bench safely. We share the content online. But the most important is that every time we are trying to take on a challenge, we're trying to address a real problem. And now we have had a lot of requests to open our makerspace in other cities around the world. But um, we don't really want to open more space. What we really want is to uh, bring the maker capacity to people. We don't want to open a, a space and hire people. It's too much work, too much money. We want to start small everywhere we go. 
What if every school had a makerspace and the kids could invent solutions for the local problems? This is bright schools. The school has been built by the kids, and they take the invention in the streets. What if refugee camps, where people really need innovation the most, had access to performance tools? They could build like we did their own wind turbine and generate their own electricity. They could pump and filter their own water. Uh, they could build and maintain their own solar-powered computers. How much impact would that be? So we want to uh, bring this capacity of innovation to everybody. But traditionally, technology has been a social divider between the people who have access to technology and those who have not. But technology really should be a social connector and enable more people to have access to the top of the pyramid, to have access to become the best people that they can be, potentially. So we are dreaming of a network of invention labs, of, or just benches, or just people who are inventing and sharing the ideas, so that we can generate our own electricity and food locally, so we can recycle and upcycle so that we can really, truly decentralize manufacturing and the distribution of goods and services. This, is, will, this will be a sustainable society enabled with technology. So technology is uh, <laughs> part of being human. So how can we democratize the means of invention so that we can all contribute to the nature and to each other? Thank you very much.